YouTube, Mad Dog here. Welcome back to my channel. This video is aimed at people that may be relatively new to camping, survivalism, bushcraft, the outdoors thing, whatever you choose to call it, or whatever you are practicing. Uh, and it's a, a bit of a cold weather tip, really, yet again. <clears throat> for those of you guys and lasses that already know all this sort of stuff, again, forgive me for the redundancy. So, um, I'm just trying to throw little snippets out there to help uh, newcomers and youngsters along the little ways and try and you know explain simplistically some reasons why we do what we do basically for the reasons why so I'll crack on with it and this video is basically around um, your gas canisters or fuel cells whatever you want to call them um, <clears throat> for a quick example now I've got some of this here it's a small as you can see a very small gas canister 100 grams I believe gas canister and that was roughly the same price as this one a 450 gram gas canister now why would you pay the same for that as you would for that now then this is where it starts to get a little bit um, tricky depending on what you're doing what you're using and when so I'll try and explain myself so please bear with me <clears throat> Gas canisters, butane stroke propane fuel mix. It's a liquid petroleum mix, <coughs> liquid gas. Butane and propane are two liquid gases that are derived from the petroleum spirit. Now, when they are compressed into a pressurized container, they become liquid. And when they are released to the open atmosphere, it causes the liquid to boil. Now the difference in temperatures at which those liquids boil and become gaseous are vast. For example, butane is the cleaner burning of the two fuels, but butane or propane. But butane <coughs> stops boiling at, I believe, around minus 2, minus 3 degrees Celsius, around there. So just less than freezing, the butane um, canister you will struggle to light it because as you're opening the valve and exposing the gas to the, the oxygen, the atmosphere, it's not boiling, it's not releasing as much gas um, because it's too cold, basically. So it won't burn efficiently. You'll struggle to maintain a constant controlled flame. That is the only disadvantage with butane. <clears throat> it does burn somewhat cleaner. Um, gram for gram, it gives off more energy when it's burning efficiently at room temperature let's say so that's butane um, propane is the dirtier of the two gases not by a lot you know um, butane is the one that you can use in boats caravans tents etc with good ventilation of course propane is not that being said propane the massive advantage with propane gas is it still boils right down i believe to minus 40 degrees somewhere around there so you've got to be in crazy extreme conditions for propane not to boil and become gaseous therefore you're still going to have fire you're still going to have a controllable maintainable flame <coughs> so cracking me i'm right rambling on but this is a little bit of info that you might find useful you might not we'll see so some companies what they do is to get around this problem they mix the two butane stroke propane you know, it does say on the top, butane stroke propane, but, uh, butane stroke propane in various quantities. <coughs> you will generally find, <coughs> excuse me, that canisters, standard camping gas, stamp, standard camping gas or gas, in this case, I think it is a gas, G A Z, yep, will be butane heavy. Um, they're assuming you're going on a camping trip in normal conditions, nothing extreme, and you probably won't be camping out anything less than minus two, three, four at the worst. So that will still provide good, a good amount of reliable fuel. Um, so that's why this is, let's say, six quid for one of those over here in the UK. And this 100 grammer is also six quid, but it has a much higher propane content, which means whilst it does have butane as well to keep it controllable you'll see there minus 27 degrees C so this is good for a lot lower temperatures 
<coughs> excuse me so in this time of year you know if you're still going out wild camping bushcrafting whatever you ideally need a higher propane content than butane if this makes sense i hope i'm not getting this making this too much of a mind bender for everybody um, i get myself in a twist with it sometimes <laughs> um so that's that will explain the difference in price per value for money as in volume that one is a lot more durable in minus conditions now as we all know you can go high if you go into hill climbing mountain climbing the higher you go <clears throat> the thinner the air gets therefore the more efficient any of the fuel canisters will burn so you get more bang for your buck the higher up you go so you know if you're cooking at the bottom of a valley versus at the top of a hill on the same piece of land you will get more hours of usage minutes of usage from the same amount of fuel from the same type of fuel canister if that makes sense i hope it does um that's another little footnote quick little tip <clears throat> whilst you're looking around the supermarkets or you know the bargain basement <laughs> buckets to buy these fuel canisters um, a little tip if the canister this is a general uh, rule is one of these types where I'll try and bring this in a little ways where it's the clamp on no threaded crimped fitting the type used on a lot of lanterns etc and a lot of normal camping stoves then generally <clears throat> the gas inside of there will be butane biased <coughs> excuse me okay so that pretty much denominates that it's safe to use indoors with proper ventilation and supervision all the rest of it if you have a threaded fitting if this will pick up very well in my poor lighting again you see a bit of a thread there then that normally is a good indicator that your canister will have a higher percentage of propane so therefore better in lower extreme temperatures oh. <laughs> uh, if you're all still watching and you're not falling asleep yet thank you very much oh dear so the disposable sort of canisters like we all see for you know for your heaters cookers lanterns whatever they're usually very biased to butane <clears throat> And if you experiment with these, you'll see that it is truthful. I'm telling you the truth. You go outside on a cold day, get your lantern lit up. You can get adapters for these, for, for those, and anything that you might want to screw onto there. There's lots of adapters available. To include ones that you can refill. They don't recommend ever refilling pressurised containers, but if you want to experiment on your own heads, be it. Always do it outside no naked flames or sources of ignition obviously <clears throat> personally is it worth it you know each to their own i've digressed sorry <laughs> so these throwaway containers if you was to get one of these and use the same appliance a heater or a stove connect it up and one of these propane with the same appliance attached and take it out into the field on a very cold day you would see a couple of things one this would struggle to maintain a efficient heat output full volume full whack on the valve this would burn quite happily boil your water in the three or four minutes or maintain a strong light whichever utensil you're using not a problem but obviously this is going to not last as long <laughs> because as the the liquid fuel boils <clears throat> it also cools itself inside so therefore by doing that becomes less efficient if, if that if all this is making sense so little tip i know this is daft but it really does work trust me if you're going out backpacking and you've got your fuel canister let's say for argument's sake that this is <clears throat> a small butane so it's susceptible to cold weather just drop it in a sock you know get that thing before you set off drop it in on your wool sock one of your wool socks turn it over a few, a few times and carry it so it's insulated or at the next level of um, 
that is get yourself a, cu a cut piece of mylar blanket and wrap it around that cylinder bit of tape this does two things <clears throat> because you've wrapped it in layers you are insulating it making air, air pockets <clears throat> to keep it warm but it's also reflecting the cold it reflects the cold as well as the heat you know if you put that to it to exposure of the sunlight then you're reflecting sunlight but in a cold environment you're also reflecting cold so it works both ways it's worth doing or do both wrap it in mylar survival blanket and drop it in a sock double whammy win-win so that when you take your kit out and you connect your stove to it so let's say it's minus eight you know it does happen quite frequently over in the UK <clears throat> so you've got this is a little APG um, stove, cheapo stove, you know, little lightweight thing, which I will do a review on, show you if you it all in use soon. It's a nifty little thing, this is. Um, so you've got your stove, you've connected up. You can then, obviously, you've taken the sock off. You don't want anything left on your cylinder that's flammable. But you've taken your sock off, but leave leave the mylar blanket on because it's, it's very, very hard to ignite this stuff. Um, it will help the liquid from getting cold as it's used so therefore you'll burn more efficiently again I know I'm rambling on but if you can get the higher up higher altitudes more bang for your buck your fuel will last longer and burn more efficiently um, whether this has all made sense to any of you or not I don't know but it is it is factual um, propane is better for cold weather Butane is better for indoors and it's cheaper gram for gram Like I say that cost me roughly the same as the small propane bias tank Anyway, <laughs> if you're all still with me. Wow. Thank you very much. I hope you find some of this useful if not interesting <laughs> and uh, You know, let me know what you'll think in the comments below and um, like I say I'll be doing a little look round review on this little pocket stove soon <clears throat> It is actually a, a nice dandy little bit of kit for the price point as well. So we'll be reviewing that later on. And uh, I think I can't remember the wattage now. Is it 2,300? Something like that. So it's not a bad output. Little stove with a, a regulating valve there. Stainless steel stove. Folds down nice and, nice and easy. Like so. Stick that on one of your little lightweight propane... Um, fuel cells and away you go you know good enough for a day out weekend out anyway take care out there till next time mad dog signing off yeah Just one more thing, <laughs> I sound like Columbo, don't I? <laughs> Before I let you all go this time, um, just a quick footnote. If any of you guys and lasses have ever used one of these little butane um, heaters, you can use them in caravans, boats. They're not recommended for tents because of the ventilation stroke flammability aspect of it. But um, quick little tip, the butane gas uh, fueled. Therefore, the resultant emissions are very biased and very heavy in water. When butane burns in the air, it gives off moisture. So, if you're in a caravan, especially an old one, or like I used to own, I've had a couple of boats over the years. Um, you know the river cruisers, like the, you know the plastic boats, if you like, fiberglass boats, um, thirty footers. Um, me and my missus we've spent a few nearly swore well I will do bloody cold nights out on the waterways where we've been iced in etc and we've had a couple of these to try and you know stay warm keep the cold off and um, what's happened is because we've oh, snuggled around this and we've you know oh, we've left it on longer than we should um, you shut the doors to keep the heat in 
we've opened the top vents to let any fumes or you know bad stuff out but it increases the condensation so everything on the roof the roof line of the boat was wet through you get drip 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 which when you get in your sleeping bags etc you get wet through and you're cold again <laughs> so you're better off in my opinion losing them stay warm in a conventional method manner you know um, more layers of clothing do some exercises get some good food down here and generally stay warm properly don't don't cheat don't use one of these especially you know in that sort of environment you just wake up wet through it's not worth it and so does all your kit you know everything around you gets drip 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 condensation horrible horrible not good times um, that's if it doesn't freeze and you end up with bloody stalactites and stalactites everywhere as well so another little tip from the mad dog i will le uh, leave you in peace now i'll leave you alone stay safe see you soon yeah